Good morning. I am Sridhar, Assistant Professor, Government Professional College, Kola. Today, now I am going to discuss interference of light. Here, in interference of light, today now we are going to study wave theory. Here, how a wave is produced? When a stone is dropped on the still water, when that medium gets disturbed, wave is formed. Here, light is a form of energy that produces the sensation of sight. Light is a form of energy which produces the sensation of sight. Here there are different properties of light. That means light exhibits various properties. Light propagates through vacuum with the velocity of c. With velocity c, that is c is equal to 3 into 10 power 8 meter per second. Light travels in straight lines in a homogeneous medium. See, light always travels in straight lines in a homogeneous medium, that is rectilinear propagation of light. Light gets reflected from smooth surface. See, when light is incident on a smooth surface, for example, wall, that means light is reflected. That is called a reflection of light. Light gets refracted when it travels from one medium to another medium. So when light travels from one medium to another medium of different refractive indices, that means light is entering from one medium to another medium, the ray ref, uh, bends, that is called as what? Refracted, that means it undergoes refracted, that is called as refraction. Light gets dispersed on passing through its triangular prism. We have already studied when light is passing through a triangular prism, we will get the vibgaya, that means <laughs> colors of the light, that is called as what? Dispersion. Light exhibits interference, diffraction and polarization. Again, light also exhibits photoelectric effect. Photo means light, electronics means electrons ejected, that means light of or light of suitable frequency is incident on a metal electrons, it emits electrons. That is called as what? Photoelectric effect. So there are various theories of light. First one is Newton's Corpuscular Law Theory, Huygens Wave Theory, Maxwell's Electromagnetic Theory, Planck's Quantum Theory. Here, today now we are going to study Huygens Wave Theory. According to Huygens Wave Theory, Light propagates in the form of wave. Sir, light exhibits both particle and wave nature, but according to Huygen, light propagates in the form of wave. Light source sends out waves in all directions in a hypothetical medium called ether. Here, ether was assumed to be a continuous medium having a very high elasticity and low density present throughout the space. Huygen assume light wave as longitudinal, that means the direction of the particle vibration is parallel to that of the wave motion and assume ether medium for its propagation because for the propagation of the longitudinal wave, a medium is necessary. Hence, Huygen assume an hypothetical medium called ether filled with the entire space using the theory Using this theory explain reflection, refraction, simultaneous reflection and refraction, total internal reflection, dispersion, double refraction, etc. Here, <coughs> failures of Huygens theory, but Huygens failed to explain rectilinear propagation of light, diffraction and polarization. Huygens wave theory explained various phenomena but fail to explain propagation of rectilinear propagation of light that means light always travels in straight line in a homogeneous medium again it also fail to explain diffraction that is bending of light and polarization vibrations confined to a single plane we also could not able to prove the existence of ether medium because he assumed light is a longitudinal wave for the propagation of longitudinal wave a medium is necessary Hence, he assumed an ether medium, but this theory failed to explain the existence of ether medium 
These are the two failures of Huygens wave theory. Next wave frame. Here how a wave is forming? That means when the medium is get disturbed, a wave is formed. Here, <coughs> next is wave frame. The locus of all particles which vibrate in same phase is called as wave frame. Here, the locus of all particles which vibrate in same phase is called as what? Wave frame. It depends on nature of source of light. Here there are three types of wave frame. One is called a spherical wave frame, cylindrical wave frame, plane wave frame. So this is a spherical wave frame. This is cylindrical wave frame. This is plane wave frame. So this is a spherical wave frame. That means it is circle. That is spherical. Again, here the source is very nearer to the disturbance. Here the source is very nearer. That means it is a point source. So a point source is a, is a point source in isotropic medium emits spherical wave frames with the source at the center. That means a point source exhibits the spherical wave frame. A medium in which wave travels with the speed in all directions is same is called as an isotropic medium. <laughs> Again, cylindrical wave frame. When light source is linear, all points from the linear source lie on the surface of a cylinder. That means light from a cylindrical, sorry, linear source is called as what? Cylindrical wave frame. That means if wave frame coming from a linear source is called as what? Cylindrical wave frame. Next is plane wave frame. So if the point source, if a, at a larger distance, that means if the source is very larger distance, then the wave frame is said to be what? Plane wave frame. That means the wave frame coming from the sun to the earth is a plane wave frame. At a larger distance from the source, a part of the wave frame appear plane. Such a wave frame is called as plane wave frame. Next is Huygens principle. Here, according to Huygens, each and every point on the source acts as a source of disturbance which sends out secondary wavelets. So every point on wave frame is considered to be a source of center of disturbances. It acts as a source of disturbance and sends out secondary wavelets in all directions with the velocity of light in the medium, which is called as what? Huygens principle. The envelope of these wavelets in the forward direction gives the position of the new frame at any respective time. Next is loss of reflection. There are two loss of reflection that is the incident wave frame, reflected wave frame, a normal to the reflecting surface all lie in the same plane. Say so incident wave frame. The wave frame incident on the reflecting surface is called as incident wave frame. Reflected wave frame. The wave frame which is reflected from the reflected surface is called as a reflecting wave frame. A normal drawn to the reflecting surface at the point of incidence is called as normal <coughs> all lie in the same plane. Next is angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection that is angle of incidence I is equal to angle of reflection or these are the two laws of reflection. Next is loss of refraction the incident wave frame, refracted wave frame, a normal drawn to the reflecting surface all lie in the same plane at the point of incidence. Next, the ratio of sine of the angle of incidence to the sine of the angle of refraction is a constant for a pair of medium that is sin i by sin r is equal to constant. These are the two laws of refraction. Next, Huygens principle applied to reflection. Here, xy is the surface separating two media of refract the media, media 1 and media 2 of refractive index medium 1 and m2 or n1 and n2. Here xy is called as what? Reflecting surface. Separating two media that is medium 1 and medium 2. Here O is a point source. Again A, P, B is a incident wave frame. Incident wave frame. A, M, D is a reflecting wave frame. It is a reflecting wave frame. Again, say O is a point source of light. O is a point source of light. X5 reflecting surface. This is the point source. 
this is the reflecting surface again op distance between the point on the reflecting surface to the source here op is the distance between point on the reflecting surface and the point source or again apb is a spherical wave frame a p b is a incident spherical wave frame touching the reflecting surface xy at p again by the time disturbance at a and b reaches the surface xy at c and d so here when the wave frame a p b incident on the reflecting surface xy <laughs> the xy surface at c and d at c and d secondary waves from p must have travel a distance pm so travel a distance pm that is equal to ac and bd this pm must be equal to what ac and bd the secondary wavelets from a point in between a and b in between a and b will reach the corresponding points in the reflected wave frame that is cmd here yeah? this apb is a incident wave frame cmd is a reflected wave frame so when a reaches c b reaches d again p reaches m therefore you will get the corresponding points in between a and b a and b will reach the corresponding points in the reflected wave frame cmd in the absence of xy if there is no reflecting surface xy the incident wave frame a p b reaches c l d reaches sorry c l d uh, c l d center of curvature of cmd is i center of curvature of cmd is i and cmd for arcs of a circle next so from the uh, figure once again i am drawing this figure so from this figure cp square is equal to 2 pl into ol cp square is equal to 2 pl into ol 2 pl into ol that is according to geometry or ol is equal to cp square divided by 2 pl so that is cp square is equal to 2 pl into m which can also be written as cp square is equal to 2 pl into mi again mi is equal to what cp square divided by 2 pm so yes, therefore from these two equations it is clear that pl is equal to what pm therefore mi is equal to what ol mi is equal to what ol so yes. and spherical wave frame apb spherical wave frame apb on reflection from xy on reflection from xy that is reflecting surface is sent back as a spherical wave frame cmd this is a reflected spherical wave frame that is cmd which appears to have diverged from i this cmd appears to diverge from i such that mi is equal to ol mi is equal to what ol therefore mi can be written as mi can be written as what ip plus pm mi can be written as ip plus pm ip plus pm again ol can be written as ol can be written as op plus pl here pm is equal to what pl therefore ip is equal to what op pl is equal to pm from here therefore ip is equal to what op ip is nothing but what image distance op is nothing but what object distance therefore object distance is equal to what image distance next refraction at spherical wave frame at a plane surface refraction at a spherical wave frame refraction of spherical wave frame at a plane surface say <coughs> xy is the surface separating two media of refractive and that is medium 1 and medium 2 of refractive indices n1 and n2 so x y is the plane surface separating two media of refractive indices n1 and n2 that is medium 1 and medium 2 v1 and v2 corresponding velocities v1 is the velocity in medium 1 v2 is the velocity in medium 2 o is the point source of light this is a point source of light 
again a p b is a spherical wave front incident on the reflecting or refracting surface here a c is equal to b d that is equal to v 1 t because we know velocity is equal to distance by time distance is equal to velocity into time here the v 1 is the velocity t is the time taken therefore a c is equal to b d that is equal to v 1 t if there is no medium to if there is no medium to then the incident wave front that is a p b that a incident wave front a p b that is if there is no medium to then a c is equal to what b d is equal to p n if there is no reflecting surface then the p reaches to what n therefore a c is equal to b d is equal to p n that is equal to v 1 t due to presence of medium 2 due to presence of medium 2 the disturbance at p reaches m in time t it reaches only m not n that is in time t because of difference in velocity this is rarer medium this is denser medium then pm is equal to what v2 into t pm is equal to v2 into t that is velocity is equal to distance by time distance is equal to velocity into time that is pm is equal to what v2 into t therefore pm by pn divide that is pm divided by pn is equal to what <coughs> pn by pm pm is equal to v2 t pn is equal to v1 t that is v2 t divided by v1 t2 gets cancelled v2 by v1 v2 by v1 is nothing but what n1 by n2 here CMD reflected spherical wavefront appears to be diverged from I. There is, therefore, it can be written as PM by PN is equal to N1 by N2. Then for CND for the wavefront CND, CP square is approximately equal to 2PNON. CP square is approximately equal to 2PN into ON. 2 pn into o n or p n is equal to what c p square divided by 2 o n that is approximately equal to c p square by 2 o p that is equal to c p square divided by 2 u because o p is nothing but what object distance for c m d for c m d that is <laughs> c p square is approximately equal to 2 p m i m or p m is equal to c p square by 2 i m but I m is approximately equal to what I p therefore C p square divided by 2 I p that is equal to C p square divided by 2 V here I p is nothing but what image distance therefore P m by P n is equal to U by V that is equal to N 1 by N 2 that is equal to 1 by refractive index of medium 2 with respect to 1 or refractive index of medium 2 with respect to 1 can be written as V by U that is second law of refraction where refractive index of 2 medium with respect to 1 is refractive index of medium 2 with respect to 1 that is ratio of image distance to the object distance is constant and <coughs> this is refraction by what Huygens principle okay thank you